Hello and welcome to this episode of Al's Garage. Today we're going to be working on our 2014 Ford Fusion. We're taking care of the front and rear disc brakes. Should be pretty straightforward, just replacing the pads and rotors. Now before we get started, just do your homework, make sure that this is the right application for you. I know some of the models, like the hybrids, might have different components due to like regenerative braking and things like that. Uh, what we're working on here is the SE with the four cylinder 1.5 liter engine and the automatic transmission. Let's get started. Before we do, let's take a look at the tools that you need for the job. So here you can see everything that we need for the front and rear brake job. You can see the brake components as well as some tools and safety equipment. So instead of me reading everything out, just go ahead and take a screenshot or pause the video and take a note of uh, you know what I used for this job. Let's get started. As we get started on the front brakes, it's important to first get those lug nuts loosened, then lift the wheel up, then take the lug nuts the rest of the way so we can get that front wheel off. In addition to a floor jack, you may want to use jack stands or some other method to make sure that the floor jack is not the only thing holding that up. A good idea is to set the emergency brake, then get the back wheel chalked on the front and the back just to make sure that we don't have it moving backward or forward while we have it jacked up. With that front wheel off, you can see there is some wear on these brake components, which is warranting their replacement. The brakes do have some dust on them, so before you get started working on it, it's recommended that you spray everything off with brake cleaner and allow it to dry. That way as you're, you know, getting in there, taking parts off, you don't have that brake dust kicking around uh, that you could potentially breathe in. Next step is there's a cover on the upper and lower bolts that hold that caliper in place. Uh, they're essentially the guide pins that allow the sliding action to happen. So those both need to come off with a screwdriver or if you can get in there with your fingers, uh, that's a great way too. With those dust caps removed, you can take a seven millimeter hex bit socket and loosen each of those guide pin bolts to get the caliper loosened from the caliper mounting bracket. Now there's a clip mounted to the outside of each of the calipers. You wanna make sure to use a screwdriver or whatever you pry with to remove that, obviously make sure it doesn't uh, pop out and, uh, or otherwise break, but just make sure that you can get that removed um, so that you can make room for the next step. And with that clip removed, what you might encounter is that the caliper is a little bit difficult to remove because there's a ridge around the rotor because of the wear. So it may be necessary to push the piston in a little bit to allow that caliper to slide out. So you want to make sure before you do that that you pull the cap on the master cylinder reservoir which will allow any fluid as you compress the piston on the caliper to go back up to the master cylinder. Now I didn't have a C-clamp which is what is recommended for this job but I did have a, a, an old kingpin which I use as a, a driver uh, so that you know blunt metal cylinder and a wood clamp was able to you know do the job for me and get that pushed in just enough so that the pads and the caliper could slide out from the rotor and essentially be free. With the caliper free from the rotor you want to make sure to wire it up to somewhere in the car. I usually use like a spring or a strut uh, that I can tie the other end of the wire to and that will allow it to hang without putting any pressure on the flex brake line. Those flex lines are not designed to hold the weight of those calipers, so really important that you do that uh, so that you don't damage your brake line. What I'm replacing here is the OEM pads and rotors, and when you pull those off, you'll discover that the pad on at least the outside is attached with an adhesive. So that was a little bit of a, a struggle for me to get off, but you know, being able to pry it off uh, after you know working with it a little bit uh, was how I was able to succeed in that. And with the pads removed, I was able to get that wood clamp that I previously used into the caliper so that I could 
push that piston into the caliper the rest of the way. Next step is to remove the caliper mounting bracket and that takes two bolts using an 18 millimeter socket. Those are pretty tight on there and I used a breaker bar to bust them loose and then uh, ratchet the rest of the way. Once those two bolts are removed, you should be able to get that bracket off pretty easy. With that bracket removed, the rotor should slide right out. However, it may take a little bit of work to break it loose if it's been on there since, for instance, it was new. I used a rubber mallet to kind of shake it loose and it was able to uh, come off easy from there. One step I took is I sanded some areas that had a little bit of surface rust that were on the hub, which essentially mounts to the back side of the rotor. I just wanted to make sure that my new rotor coming on had a nice clean surface to rest against. Next step is to get the new rotor out of the box and prepare it for install. With my brake components, I'm using the Ford Motorcraft brand brakes. Everything is going to be the uh, factory original brakes. These brakes went 135,000 miles and it was a lot of highway driving but there was a lot of city driving in there as well. So I wanted these brakes once I did this job to go another 135,000 miles. So that's why I sprung for the more expensive Ford brand parts but that's why I'm putting the Ford parts on this. One thing to note, you can see there's a gray protective coating on the rotors here. You don't need to remove that. That's on there just to keep it from rusting during transport and all that. So essentially you can just stick it right on and just using that rotor will cause that gray protective film or paint or whatever it is to wear off uh, after a little bit of use. From here, the rotor just slides right on the hub. Super simple process. Before you install the caliber mounting bracket, it's a good idea to take it and spray it with some brake cleaner. Just get it nice and clean so as everything's going back together, it's as close to like new condition as possible. As you prepare to install the caliber mounting bracket, it's a good idea to take those bolts and apply some thread locker on those threads. I use a Permatex Blue thread locker, which is sort of the non-hardening thread locker which allows you to you know take it off in the future uh, and then installation is just a reverse process as you took it apart and as you tighten up those caliper bracket mounting bolts know that the torque rating on those is 111 foot pounds which is really very tight uh, I have a pretty good idea for what that is but you know keep in mind the torque rating for the lug nuts is about a hundred foot-pounds so you know these are on there really really tight as we put this together the next step is to prep the caliper and you can do that by starting to scrape some of the glue off of where that outside pad goes I was able to using a scraper and some solvent get that piece nice and cleaned up and since I'm using the OEM pads I'm gonna take that opportunity to make sure it's nice and clean so there's no unevenness in the uh, mounting area when I apply the new pad. And from here it's just a matter of installing the outside pad and to do that again I'm using the OEM ones that actually have that adhesive on it so I'm pulling off that little piece of plastic wrapping that uh, exposes the adhesive and then making sure that is placed uh, in the correct position. Next step is to install the pad that mounts on the inside. Now those are easy to identify since they have that metal bracket which clips into the inside of the piston of the caliper. So that's just a matter of you know kind of working that in until it clips into the caliper piston. Once in the correct position then I put that caliper in place. And I didn't show it but it is important to put a little bit of silicone grease on the ears of those brake pads right here to make sure that as that moves along there is some lubrication there helps get the most life out of your brakes the next step is to install the caliper guide pins and for those it's important to make sure that they are hundred percent clean you know cleaned off ready to go 
and then I use like a 3M silicone paste, something that's not like a, a you know motor oil or grease like for wheel bearings. And the important reason for that is to make sure that there's no resistance when the caliper and those brake pads compress in and then go back out and compress and go back out because if they're not able to fully go back out you're going to end up with premature brake wear you'll replace all these components and then it won't give you as much life as you were originally hoping for so a pretty important step here the installation of those caliper mounting bolts those guide pins is the reverse of how you pull them out make sure that when you tighten them up it calls for 22 foot pounds so not terribly tight but obviously needs to be nice and snug and with those fully installed just make sure you have the uh, dust covers uh, installed on those as well the next step is to install that clip that goes on the outer pad it's a little tricky to get installed but overall it shouldn't be too bad to get in I used a screwdriver to help me out just because it's spring-loaded and you might have to do the same with everything installed and then tightened, it's a good idea just to do a visual look around and make sure did I tighten everything, uh, does everything look good and ready to go. And from there, the next step is to install your tire and your lug nuts and get that tightened down and secured. And as you tighten down your wheel, make sure those lug nuts are tightened down in a cross hatch pattern. I usually tighten it most of the way and then drop it down off the jack and then run through my uh, final tightening sequence. The other front wheel is the same process, just reversed. It's always a good practice to do both wheels uh, on the left side and the right side at the same time just to make sure that there's even distribution. It may only be squeaking on one wheel, but you gotta make sure, you know, so the vehicle doesn't pull or anything like that, uh, that, that both wheels are done at the same time. And you'll find that as you do your second wheel, it'll probably go a little bit faster than the first. If you're here for the rear brakes portion of this video, welcome. It's very similar to the front, but there's a few key differences that we're gonna outline. They both start off the same way. You want to make sure that you loosen your lug nuts, uh, just break them loose, then lift the wheel off the ground. That way, as you continue to loosen those lug nuts and pull the wheel off, uh, it's a lot easier process than having it free spinning off the ground. So make sure, obviously, that as you get your vehicle up on a floor jack up off the ground, that you have uh, either uh, jack stands or some other safety means to make sure that your jack is not the only thing holding it on. As with the front, it has some residual brake dust existing on it, so it's a good idea and good practice to hit it with some brake cleaner to get some of that to drain off. I always use a pan underneath so you don't make a mess in your garage or driveway or wherever you're doing this job. With the rear brakes, there's a clip that holds an outside pad on the brake caliper and that comes off pretty easy with a screwdriver as you can see here. Next up is removing the upper and lower caliper mounting bracket bolts and those use a seven millimeter hex bit socket. Once those are removed, the brake caliper should pull away pretty easily. Now once the caliper is removed, this is where there's a difference from the front on those pistons. Instead of you being able to just push it in, the caliper piston actually threads in. And so what I'm using here is just a pair of needle nose pliers. I'm rotating it in, rotating it clockwise, which pushes that caliper piston in which will allow for the room needed for the new pads and new rotor. Once the caliper piston is pushed all the way in, just like with the front, I wire up the caliper because it's important that the rear brake flex lines don't have the weight of that caliper uh, you know, pulling them down because uh, obviously you don't want that component to go out because of unnecessary stress. Next up, if it hadn't already been done, 
uh, in your job, you'll need to remove the pads from the uh, brake assembly, the wheel assembly. And you can see that the inner pad has that sort of uh, clip attached to it. That's how you know that's the uh, inside one. The next step is to remove the caliper mounting bracket. For that, you need a 16 millimeter socket and it's two bolts holding the bracket on. Once those two bolts are fully removed, that bracket should easily come off. From here, the rotor should be able to be removed, but since these have been the first time this brake system has been addressed, and it's about 135,000 miles, they are sticking on just a little bit. A rubber mallet was able to break loose these rear rotors, uh, and, and sometimes that's all it takes. From here, I'm using sandpaper and cleaning up any rust that was built up between the surface of the hub and what was on the rotor. I just want to make sure when the new rotor is installed that it is going onto a nice, smooth, clean surface. From here, I take the caliber mounting bracket and I clean it off with brake cleaner. You know, just something as you're going through the brake system, you want to make it look, you know, and perform as new with the new components. Uh, you know, this is just one step. It's just to remove as much old brake, you know, dust and dirt and everything as possible. At this point, I'll pause and I'll show the front and the rear rotors and pads together. The indicator for me where it was like, okay, time to get in here and work on brakes was the rear pads were starting to grind on the rotor. Now, I, you know, you can see that the level of the pads has gone all the way down to essentially the metal backing plate. And again, with that grinding, that was my indication to start doing some work on this. You can see what's interesting is uh, that the, the front pads didn't wear as fast as the rear pads, which is unusual. Typically the front brakes, uh, those are the ones that go out earlier because they're the ones dealing with more load. That's obviously why they're bigger. So from here, it's time to unbox and install the new rotor and new pads. As mentioned with the front brakes, I'm using OEM Ford parts. Since these went 135-ish thousand miles and it was city driving, highway driving, uh, you know, commuter stuff, uh, but also some city stuff, you know, it was a good mix of driving. And I thought, you know, if I'm going to want to do that again, because I know I'm going to have this car that long, then I want to go with brakes that are just as good. And, and that's why I'm going with the uh, Ford parts. With the new rotor installed, as it just slides in over those studs that hold the wheel on, the next step is to install the caliper mounting bracket. For this, I'm using a thread sealer. It's a Permatex blue thread locker to make sure that the threads in that bolt holds in place and doesn't come undone as you know the the natural process of these brakes is that they kind of vibrate and and you know they go through a lot of um, exchanges you know where they get really hot and cool and hot and cool so uh, always a good idea to have that thread sealer on and as we tighten these down i'm using a torque wrench on these bolts the mount to torque these caliper mounting bracket bolts on the rear for this type of a car is 66 pounds Next, install the inner and outer brake pads, and I didn't do a good job of showing it here, but make sure that you have some caliper grease on the ears of those pads right here and right here. That way, as those move in and out, uh, as it moves back and forth, uh, that there is some lubrication there. And make sure that the pad with the clip goes on the inside. And then from there, just install your caliper over the top of it, and then install the caliper mounting bolts, which includes those guide pins. Those should be tightened to 21 foot-pounds. And as mentioned with the front, make sure to get those nice and clean and use like a silicone lube. A lot of times you can buy little packets at the auto parts stores, which will allow you to uh, put some lubrication in those dowel pins to make sure that there's no resistance going, you know, when the, the pads, you know, close, compress, and then they release and compress and release. You want to make sure that there's no premature wear of your brake components with them not being able to release properly. Next step is to make sure that that clip is installed on the outside of the outer pad. 
uh, you know, using a screwdriver is what I found is the most successful way to get that clipped in there. With that clip installed, you can now put your rear wheel on, which is a pretty straightforward process. Just make sure to tighten up those lug nuts in a crosshatch pattern, drop your vehicle down, and then hit them one more time to make sure that they are fully tightened. The torque rating for the lug nuts is around 100 foot-pounds. Once you have all of your brake work done, whether it be fronts only or fronts and rears, rears only, make sure that you take that cap and install it back on the master cylinder reservoir. Then from there, take your foot and push it on the brake pedal. It should, the first time around, go all the way to the floor, and that's because since we push the pistons all the way out, uh, you know, there's a lot of room for travel as, you know, the brake piston and the hydraulics kind of, you know, push the pads back to where they're in a spot really close to the rotors. It should take a few rounds of stepping on that brake pedal to ensure that you have enough brake pressure built up. Uh, and then the next step I usually do is I start the vehicle, which will kind of enact the power brakes on it, and then I push it just a few times more just to make sure your brake pressure is fully built up before you do anything with you know, putting it in gear and going in reverse or going forward or anything like that. You just want to make sure that your brake pressure is fully built up. So from here I'm going to take the car, drive it down the road, stop it at the stop signs and the appropriate red lights just to make sure that we're all good to go. We should be fine, but it's always a good thing to do before the family gets in the car. Uh, I hope this video was helpful and valuable for you if you're tackling this job either on the front or rear brakes or both. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.